there are a lot of social and political events that have a great influence on cybersecurity and that cause surges in cyber attacks. For example, when there was the World Cup in Russia, there were a lot of attacks on Russia because everybody was there, so the hackers also went to where the action happens. Whenever there is political tension against, between two countries, there are a lot of attacks going back and forth. So if the cyber dimension is present and is there, and if we take it into account in our model and our defenses and our intelligence, then we can be more proactive about defending ourselves and even predicting that such attacks will happen. So many militaries around the world have already included cyber troops in their military. So these troops sometimes do defensive actions, sometimes they even do offensive actions. Many militaries are using cyber attacks to do intelligence, so spying. So spying is not like the 007 old style. They're collecting data from phones, from conversations, from and that's how they get information about what their opponents are doing. It's, it can be a very interesting way to collect information. Some militaries go even further, go even into incurring damage on their opponent, like physical damage on their opponents, and we've seen few cases on those. So it's a lot some countries invest a lot in cybersecurity, some countries invest less, it's not homogeneous. But even countries that invest a lot in cybersecurity still have a lot to be done. Like the cybersecurity techniques nowadays are still limited. There is still a lot of work to develop even better technical tools, like using AI is a very promising approach. Now, even in the legal system, political system, there is also a lot to be done. But a lot has already been done already. And still, more can be done. <laughs>